Um, I want to talk about the oil pastels and how I use them and a fixative that I've tried. I've tried a lot of different techniques with the oil pastels and I kind of use them in a certain way, as I was saying earlier. If you're new to them or if you're frustrated with them, whenever you're, you want to think about your artwork, how you create. So let's say you mainly work in acrylics and you can add the oil pastels on top of it as for mark making or adding just a really interesting different effect on top of your acrylic paintings. I have also smooshed them around with regular pastels and and looked at how the pigments kind of mush together and it's a very cool effect. I've done that in flowers. I personally don't try to make a refined drawing or painting with the oil pastels. And it but I do like the texture and the kind of messiness that it creates. It's kind of a cool effect. So um, I am going to show, we're going to, I have a couple different pieces of paper and some different materials here. One thing about oil, I'm using the Sennelier oil pastels. And if you're going to try them, I would not get a whole set. You can go on to Dick Blick and you can buy, you know, one and, you know, maybe start with black, white and a color and an experiment with it on different pieces of paper. They don't dry. They, it's not like oil paints that are going to dry. You have to use the special fixative by Sennelier and it will make them less tacky feeling and it keeps them from moving around anymore on the paper. So it's something that you have to put on top. So it's kind of like if you're, you're doing a painting and you put a varnish on it, you want to put this fixative on it. It really takes that stickiness away. Um, okay. And then I have tried them on canvas on wood panels. I like to use them on wood panels, like in marks, like chunky marks. And I also use this Arches oil paper. And this paper is wonderful if you're working with oils. You can also use it for acrylics too. It's a really pretty paper. It's kind of a soft, creamy paper. Um, and I used it, to, here's an oil, this is just an oil painting that I did on the oil paper. So it's oil and coal wax and there are a lot of layers and it's really holds up well. And then you can scrub on top of it and do whatever you want to do. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn this around and we're going to play around with the oil pastels. So when we're using, you have, Using these pastels or any pastels, you have to understand what their limitations are. And for me, um, I know that they melt, I know that they crumble, and I'm prepared for that. I don't try to create really refined work. So I use them um, just kind of to add some cool layers. So I wanna show you, let's see. Let me move this around. So I kind of started this little test swatch here. And the other thing is they're sticky, so you could choose to wear rubber gloves. So when I was playing with this, I have this kind of peachy color. Can you see okay? All right. And I just put down the color and then you can take a white. There's also a blending one that doesn't change the color, but you can get a nice value range and you can use your fingers to smear it, which is kind of cool. And I like to take a colored pencil within my color palette and you can scrape away and make more marks with it. So I can add different marks to it and I can keep pulling and blending the colors so it might be fun for like an abstract background. You can also use a brush, but I noticed that the brush gets very kind of glommed up and you can clean the brush in like a, a mineral spirits if you choose to do that. So you can see that you can get a really pretty blended um, color range. And so you just can keep adding layers 
and then pull it away, make the marks in it, move it around, scrape down. I got this little scrapey tool here that can go down and dig into this, which I think that is really kind of cool looking. So that's one thing by just picking out two or three colors and just laying down color. So now, of course, it's very sticky. So I'm gonna I'm gonna spray this in here. Okay, so I just sprayed it. I'm gonna let it sit over, over to the side. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is, let's say you have like a little piece of paper um, and you need to make some new collage paper. Well, like we do with black ink, you can just create an entire series of marks. And I like how chunky it is. I do have more control because it is you know, uh, it's my pastel. It's more so than a brush and ink. And I think that it brings a different element to your artwork. And they, they, I try to keep this wrapper on for as long as possible because they are sticky. But I've accepted that about them, <laughs> that they're sticky, they melt, they're mushy, but they really are very pretty. And I think that's kind of a cool effect. And then I can take my mechanical pencil and I can scratch into this. You could do this on a canvas. You can do an entire page and then you spray it. And I'm getting this. Might have a paper towel. So now I have this graphite pencil and the marks that it made. So I think that's kind of interesting and it has a little bit of sheen to it. I'm gonna spray it. So I'm just doing one coat, I'll put it aside. All right, the other thing I want to show you is let's say you do want to put it in a drawing. And I've done this, let's see. Okay, so I have this little sketch. I was figuring out something here. And I just did it in charcoal and let's see the, let me do this up here. Sometimes I can't get it all in. Okay. I did it in charcoal and some Neo2. So I have some greens here and I mean, I wouldn't do the entire drawing in pastel, in the oil pastel, because I like to see some of the delicate lines but I may want to bring in this kind of chunky um, mark. So I'm just going to go in this leaf and I'm going to add this and I'm kind of doing it on an angle so I get a really interesting effect. And then let's say I go over here and I do the same thing. Okay. And then I can layer on top of it. I have another green and then I can push it in and then roll it around and get some interesting marks. Maybe come over here. And let's see, let's get a, I have a little um, colored pencil here and I can cut into it if I wanna make some lines, take some out and push it outside. I love doing that. I love taking the material here. The other thing too that I've tried, which I don't have it out today is if you take a little bit of walnut oil, um, you can kind of melt it a little bit and move it around. Let me, do you want to see that? I can get it real quick. Let's see what happens. I've done this before because a really long time ago. So I have this walnut oil. It's the lavender. It's um, cold pressed by Chelsea Classical Studio and it's all natural and not toxic. Okay, so I just have a tiny bit in here. I'm just going to dip my brush in and just kind of move it around. Probably grab the worst brush for this. But you can kind of melt it together. You can see how it's kind of blending and moving it which is kind of cool. I think I would experiment more with that idea if it's something you're interested in. And 
maybe just do a few spots so you get this kind of watery glaze. All right, so now let's see what happens when I add, let's see, do I have a burnt sienna over here? Where's my burnt sienna? I just put a little bit on top of it and then move it in there. So this is how, you know, we can just develop our process by experimenting with the different materials. And by not buying a whole set, but just getting a few, a few colors that work into our palette. Let's see. I think that's kind of interesting, actually. Just kind of moving it around, having touches of it in there or a line within your, in your, um, in an abstract. See, I have this darker blue, put a little blue in there. Mm -hmm. This color is pretty. This is a blue gray. Does it have a number on it? I like this a lot. I've used it a few times. Let's so put a little bit. I'm giving me some chunky marks around here. So it's just one more element that you can bring to your artwork and without committing to this big set or an entire painting done in oil pastels. But I like how creamy they are. That's really pretty. Okay, all right, so that Let's see. All right, I'm gonna move this over to the side. Now, this is what I'm gonna do. I wanna do a little mini collage. Let's see. I'm just gonna put this here. And I have, <clears throat> sorry, let's see. I have this rose color and I have burnt sienna and I have white. So what I'm gonna do is I have this piece of paper here and I think, how's this doing? Oh, it's not super sticky. See, this one's very sticky and this one's not, this is one I think. No, this is the one I did, it's still sticky. Maybe it hasn't dried yet. Oh, terrible teacher, Renee, you don't even know what you're doing. <laughs> Okay, all right, I'm gonna just turn this over so I don't get oil pastel all over my little piece of vintage paper. And I'm going to layer. So I'm gonna just start by adding this dark, and I'm not gonna cover the entire piece, but I want you to think about how it can be a background for you or on top of your acrylic um, abstracts, or even in a portrait. Okay, so this is on the oil paper. Now I'm gonna go in with this rose and kind of add another layer so you can see how And then I can take the white and I can soften it. I think it looks really pretty. I like the thickness of it. And then you can just make some little scribbly marks. So I'm using this very limited palette. So I have burnt sienna and white and it's a rose. I don't know what the name of it is. But I am making a bit of a mess.
All right, and I want to add this and this kind of this little collage. And I have this page, it's a copy of my grandmother and her brother dancing. So I'm going to try and do this in with my messy hands, stitch this together and then put it all on top here. Let's see how this all works. So I don't know if you remember, this is from when I did the um, holiday cheer. We made all those different little booklets. So I'm repurposing one. I won't stitch too long. And I, I have some like little fingerprints that are happening, but I like that. I think that looks pretty. Just have little smudges here and there. I'm always hesitant to do a lot of stitching on Facebook Live because it seems to take a long time and I'm always worried you're gonna like, okay, Renee, move on with the stitching. All right, so I'm just gonna do another one here. But I need to add in, I have this little ticket that kind of works into my color palette that I'm gonna put into here. It's like the, and I kind of think of like a, the ticket to the dance or something. All right. like that little tear in the paper. So I'm gonna kind of take it over here and stitch through it. So when you're experimenting, and experiment with intention. Um, take out the supplies that maybe are frustrating to you and then combine some different elements and the things you like doing, like your stitching and your collage or your portraits and start combining them together just to play with it because you never know what you're gonna discover when you're working with something. And I think that it really um, opens you up to trying things without having to really commit to it, you know, buy the supply and then I have to create something that exactly as this is intended to be. All right. I feel like we need a little bit more down here and I'm gonna make it kind of chunky. It's like making these little marks in it. All right. right here and then one stitch down here there's a little signature there that was my grandmother's I have the original picture it's just so sweet I want to have it framed because it's very it's, it was taken out of a photo album so it still has like this black paper on the bottom that I think is really pretty the way it's kind of torn and her little signature all right, so I'm gonna cut this like so. All right, then it's gonna bring in a little bit of connecting the two. I kinda wish I did the tape on it, but I didn't. So I must accept that I didn't do it. my trusty stapler out you know how I like to use that maybe it needs to be right in the middle okay paper towel and I'm going to just kind of rub 
into this to clean up my edges a little bit. I would like to try it again, not today, but um, with taping my edges. I think it would be really much more dramatic if I did that. So the paper towel, it seems to work a little bit better than my finger. But they are messy. guy out of the way. All right. Oh my, my debris here. All right. All right. I kind of think that's fun. So, you know, I think it's, you know, up to you to think about how you would use them and give them a try in your artwork and but do create like you normally create and you know i like doing these layered collages with stitching and adding the marks this is kind of like that little thread going through i do like it i think it's kind of fun so then I've got pastel over everything. All right, so these are the little pieces and I'll spray this too. Uh, I like this, I got, oh, where's that little scratchy thing? I kind of like that, I wanna do that again. This was a pottery tool that I bought when I was taking my little pottery class. It's all glommed up, but that's okay, it makes it better. All right, so I will just spray that, and then I have this one that has been sprayed, and it is much drier now. It's not as tacky, and I really like this, how that all came out with the, the black and the graphite pencil. All right, so I'm gonna flip it over, and you can ask me any questions. I'll save this. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to put all links and everything and, and pictures and talk about it a little bit more in my blog post. And I'm going to look for some other um, information, too. If I can find any other tutorials I think you guys might like, um, I'll let you know if anything comes across my um, in my search for this. But I think there's also other books out that are talk about oil pastels. Um, but I think that you know, just don't limit yourself um, if with the materials and play with play with them, get three colors and then experiment with it. All right, so let me flip you around. So thank you, thank you. Have a great rest of your Thursday.